Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the BCA SISO Scale Webinar, Community of Practice on Safe Management Measures. My name is Hui Wen from BCA. We are very grateful to have Singapore Institution of Safety Officers SISO and the Singapore Contractors Association Limited Scale in joining us today to organize this live webinar. With more projects restarting work at site, maintaining an established and well-informed safe management officers community is crucial. This webinar will share with you on the best practices for implementation of safe management measures so as to maintain a safe restart on site and safeguard against resurgence of outbreaks. Before we start, I would like to quickly run through some housekeeping measures. Please note that as participants, you are on mute setting. Should you have any questions or if you wish to add on to the discussion, you may do so by clicking the Q&A button on the screen to type in your queries or inputs. When you get to the Q&A segment, we will also be activating the recent function to take live questions or comments from the audience. Should you wish to ask a question verbally at that time, do click the raise hand icon. Do also note that when a session ends, you will be directed to access an evaluation form after you have exited the webinar. Once submitted, you will be able to download the speaker's presentation materials via the website as shown. Here's an overview of today's program. The webinar co-chairs will first give their welcome addresses followed by presentations by BCA, Baker Hughes and Street Construction. The session will then end up with a Q&A segment. Let us first invite Engineer Puniton, Director of Building Plan and Policies Department, Building Plan and Advertisement Licensing Department, BCA, Mr. Niranjan, Vice President, SISO, and Mr. Kenneth Liu, Immediate Past President, SCAL, to deliver their welcome addresses. Webinar co-chairs, please. Hi, right, can you hear me? Webinar co-chair, Angelia Puniton, I think I'm on mute. Could you unmute yourself first? Thanks. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Puni here from uh, BCA. Thank you, Aina. Uh, hopefully, it will be fruitful to you and this kind of seminars we've been doing quite regularly so that the industry can be abreast with the knowledge of what is good and what are the areas to improve. Uh, we would also like to thank everyone that the effort has been very tremendous and the industry has been improving with the past few days. We have been seeing very few COVID cases, uh, touch wood and good that we keep this progressing well. And all the efforts from the industry partners like you has been welcoming and such seminars, I think is fruitful for everybody to carry on with uh, the understanding. Uh, with that, I'll pass to Mr. Kenneth to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, Angela Puniton, Mr. Narendra, uh, fellow members and colleagues at the Build Environment, speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm delighted to know that we have about 600 participants attending the webinar this morning. This webinar targets as SMO, but I hope that there are SDOs and other site personnel amongst you. I personally believe that for safe management measures to be effectively implemented in our work site and organization, it is not about how much time or effort our SMO or SDO police the site. Having an established and well informed SMO and project team, Knowing and understanding what measures to be put in place and what measures are most effective is important. It has been four months, four and a half months since the circuit breaker ended on 1st June 2020. I know it has been very tough for everyone and I share your frustration while we restart and stop along the way. Why is this happening? It is important we are all learning and understanding about the virus and how to manage it. it is unlikely, unlike general safety and health, which we all have been addressing for years. In this second run of the webinar, I hope all of us 
will further benefit and bring back more learning points shared by speakers from BCA and the industry. Learning from them the mistakes that others have made and developed into new measures to prevent them from happening within your work sites. Picking up good practices shared by speakers and add those that you have been implementing at your work site. With all stakeholders continuing participation and support and partnership, I'm confident that even with the new norm, we will all be able to move forward safely and progress according to our schedules while we continue to protect everyone against COVID-19. I shall not hold you back further and hope that this session will be fruitful to everybody. Do stay safe and work safe. See you guys later. Thanks. Now I'll pass to Niri. Thank you, Kenneth. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Thank you. Engineer Puni, Building Plan and Policies Department, BCA. It's a Kenneth Lu, past president, SCAL. SISO members, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the executive committee of SISO, I'd like to welcome you to this webinar on the community of practice on safety management measures, which is co-organized by BCA, SCAL, and SISO. SISO is very pleased to collaborate with BCA and SCAL to bring you the second edition of the webinar. The reason we are organizing this webinar again is that the subject matter of safe management measures remains very, very important. Just three days ago, on 12th October, the Singapore government reported the 28th fatality due to COVID-19. This latest fatality underlines the fact that our fight against COVID-19 is far from over. COVID-19 was the central topic at the Global Safety Congress held virtually last week, where they said, nobody is safe until everyone is safe. We also need to realize that this is a sea all of us are in, although each of us are on different ships. The safe measures we take on our ship will determine the safety of our voyage to a safe berth. So it is important that we do not become complacent in implementing safe management measures as the number of new case, COVID cases, despite going down, we need to keep it low. It is even more important that we share and learn about the best management measures available so that we can make our ship effective in fighting against COVID-19. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why we are all here today at this webinar. I'd like to say a big thank you to BCA for inviting SISO to join in co-organizing this webinar. Also, a big thank you to all the participants who are here today. Your participation energizes us to do even more to facilitate your efforts in implementing safe management measures. With that, I wish one and all a fruitful and engaging webinar today. Thank you. Thank you, webinar coaches. First up, we have Mr. Elvin Ng, Executive Architect, Building Plan and Universal Design Department, BCA, will be sharing on the good practices and findings of BCA site audit and inspections. Elvin, please. Okay, good morning to all. Today, I'll be sharing with you on the good practices and findings uh, so as to prevent and contain C plus infections on site. So there are four key topics that I'll be sharing today. Uh, firstly, is the key enablers to prevent and contain C plus. Secondly, we will be sharing our audit and assessment findings on site. Third, uh, how to resume works safely and quickly in the event that an STO or safety timeout has been issued. And lastly, we'll be presenting some good practices to minimize uh, site disruption. So the key to ensure the well-being of workers and minimal disruption to work sites is in 
uh, firstly, the prevention uh, of a C plus outbreak at site. And secondly, if there's a C plus uh, on site, how do we contain this C plus infection such that it does not spread beyond the localized work zones of the particular C plus? So currently the key enablers for prevention is through access control and safe management measures um, that are implemented on site. Hence, it is of uh, utmost importance for builders to ensure that proper access control and adequate SMM are practiced on site. So for example, the implementation of uh, safe entry NRIC, uh, segregation on, of common facilities and the use of visual identifiers. These are some of the uh, requirements of the SMM. So to ensure that the remaining workforce is, uh, remains healthy in the event that a C plus emerges on site, uh, what we'll do to contain it is builders should work closely with BCA to ensure that the C plus inspection is contained. And to do so, BCA will issue a safety timeout when a C plus is identified uh, at site within the last 14 days. So the purpose of this uh, safety timeout is essential because it allows for the project site to come to a safe stop. And during this STO period, builders will need to identify the affected work zones as well as the close contacts of the C plus and uh, isolate this uh, affected group immediately. Uh, and thereafter, builders are also required to disinfect the work site according to NEA guidelines. And the SMM will also have to be reviewed uh, to ensure that good SMM is being practiced. So in the next few slides, I'll be sharing with you some of the observations um, made from our site assessments, our weekly audits from the safe entry NRIC records, as well as good practices that we found uh, on site. Okay. Okay, so from June to September, BC had visited more than 3,000 work sites to assess the adequacy of SMM practices. And we found that um, you know, about 8.5% of project sites with SMM breaches. And as you can see on the slide, these are the top five SMM breaches in uh, no particular order. So um, the safe entry NRIC was not implemented or used. Uh, Trace together app was not installed or activated. They were missing SMM uh, plans on site when our inspectors went down to, to, to ask for it. And there were inadequate SMO SDOs as well as a mismatch of SE records versus the approved uh, uh, workforce list. Okay, so here are some of the images that we've taken uh, during our site assessments. So these are the more um, uh, the, the incorrect uh, SMM um, implementation, such as uh, workers not wearing masks, the, there's no segregation at common facilities, the trace together ads not activated, and Again, there's uh, no very no clear indication of work zones and or rather unclear demarcation of work zones. So on the flip side, uh, the good practices of, that we observe on site are, are the use of visual identifiers. So the different colors of helmet or uh, different colors of taping around the helmet. Uh, there's very clear physical demarcation of the uh, work zones. Um, you can see it's, it's, a, it's a physical barrier. Uh, again, the segregation of rest areas is by a physical barrier as well, and the SENRIC was implemented on site. Okay, so while we continue to observe good SMM being practiced on site, we have also noticed through our weekly audits of, of the safe entry records that a significant number of sites have been allowing uh, rate access code workers to enter the site. So. The safe entry NRIC is the first line of defense for work sites. And we are, uh, users are supposed to prohibit the entry of rate access code workers, as this is critical in stopping the spread of COVID-19 and to ensure the main workforce of the site is, uh, remains COVID-free. So BCA takes a serious view on this matter and we have carried out enforcement actions for sites which have allowed the entry of rate access code workers. And if need be, uh, more severe enf enforcement actions will be taken against repeated offenders. Okay. So we wish to remind all builders that project sites need to implement safe entry NRIC version and not the safe entry QR code version. 
So while setting up the safe entry NRIC version, Builders should click the uh, enable CMP restrictions, enable restrictions at CMP worksite. Um, so this will allow the system to properly display the access code worker of uh, each worker and will help you detect uh, which are the green access code and which are the red access code. Next, uh, to ensure the containment of C spread on site, the Issuance of STO uh, is inevitable. So this happens when a CPAS worker is found with, on site within the past 14 days. So uh, the STO is to allow projects to come to a safe stop and to carry out the necessary investigation and contact tracing. So during this period, builders are required to submit the necessary documents and uh, disinfect their work site. So from our observation, majority of the STOs were lifted within three days. And this was because builder were, builders were able to provide a prompt response uh, with adequate and complete SMM and worksite safety plan. Uh, in the event that they are, during the assessment, we found some SMM breaches of the uh, SMM, uh, start work order or SWO will be issued to the site for the necessary uh, rectification to be made. So in the next few slides, I will illustrate the importance of um, giving us an adequate SMM plan and the prompt response when um, STO is issued. Okay, so in this first case study, the builder was able to give us, uh, to get back to us quickly on D plus one. So, which is at 10.30 AM, uh, he was able to provide us all the information that was required for uh, BCA's assessment. There was also a adequate SMM as assessed from their plan. So as such, uh, BCA could process and review their submissions quickly and thereafter leave the STO on D plus two. So clearly after an STO is issued, we will require the builder to get back to us on uh, the following day, which is D plus one by two, three, five, nine hours with three main documents. Firstly is the builder's compliance report as seen as on the slide number one. Uh, secondly, will be the SMM plan, and third will be the worksite safety plan. So these three items are required um, in the event that your uh, site has been issued an STO. Okay, so this next case study is... Uh, so the builder has actually uh, given us the SMM plan to sit on D plus one as well. However, uh, there was incomplete uh, submission of the SMM, there was some key information that was missing, such as the movement control plan, uh, the follow-up plan and evacuation plan in the event that there's a C plus. So these are the key information um, that we require. And it's important in the overall assessment of the SMM uh, on site. So uh, furthermore, as you can see, the builder also submitted the builder's compliance report late, which is on D plus three. Um, and we have conveyed this information to the builder and he got back to us on D plus four. Uh, so once we have received all three items, so the builder compliance report, SMM plan and worksite safety plan, we were able to leave this STO within the same day. Okay, the next case study. Um, okay, so this case study will show the importance of the builder to, pre to be prepared to react in the event that there's a C plus case on site. So in this case, when there was a C plus uh, on site and the builder was informed, the builder was unable to make the submission uh, by D plus one. The reason is because the builder had trouble um, obtaining or retrieving the SMM plan and worksite safety plan because the files are saved on a desktop and the desktop was locked at site. And it just so happens that the people managing the site office were also issued QO. So, Therefore, the builder needed additional time to compile all the information required, and he was only able to provide us um, everything by D plus three, and we subsequently lifted the STO on D plus four. So this example places emphasis on the builder's preparedness to react, um, especially on weekends, and also to note that do not save your files on somewhere that you are not able to retrieve or access in the event that a C plus happens. Okay, 
So to minimize disruption to project site, I will share some of the good practices that builders should adopt on site. Firstly is to implement safe entry NRIC at the main entry of the work site. Um, builders are also encouraged to, to use safe entry NRIC for access control at each work zone within the work site. So uh, this means that each work zone should have a different branch code and a different SCNRIC uh, scanning, uh, scanning area. So this will help better to detect and prevent the intermixing of workers. In the event of the C+, BCA can uh, identify where this C plus worker had been operating and it will minimize the stop work disruptions only to a specific work zone. So for example, in the bottom right picture, you can see that there are um, about seven groups within, and within each group, the builder has decided to subdivide it into further uh, sub work zones. So for example, in group four, you can see that there's G4B and G4A. So there are two sub work zones. And in the event that a C plus happens to be working at G4A, uh, BCA will be able to stop work only at G4A, and this will not affect the rest of the site. So um, by implementing such uh, measures, we are able to reduce the impact of site closure as such. Secondly, our um, inspectors also observed that some CTQ or TLQ on site shares the same entry point and safe entry branch code as the project site. So for example, in this slide, the CTQ is located on the first level of the work site and there's no separate access point. Uh, and because there's no separate access point and there's no SCNRIC, we are not able to track or trace if a CTQ worker went to work that day. So to ensure that only healthy and authorized workers from the CTQ enter the work site, there should be segregation between the CTQ and the work site. And if physical segregation is not possible, say for example, because the site is too small, then uh, a separate access control system should be uh, used or implemented to lock this movement of workers in and out of CTQ to the main site. Okay, so in addition to safeguard your workforce at site and avoid uh, the large number of QOs, builders are strongly encouraged to hold their toolbox meetings or briefings at smaller groups in different locations, preferably in the in open, uh, where it's well ventilated and with staggered timings. So these meetings should be conducted, uh, like I said earlier, in a, in a well ventilated area and with safe distancing um, implemented. Okay, so during the re-emergence of cases in Sungai Tengah Lodge, I think it's about, about one and a half months ago, BCA noticed that there was a roving subcontractor firm or an RSC firm that cross-deployed their workers to six different project sites. And when two of these uh, workers were tested positive, STO was issued to three project sites. And this this example highlights the potential risk that uh, roving subcontractors carry. And if adequate SMM is not practiced, uh, these roving subcontractor workers could potentially spread the virus to the main workforce of the, uh, the work site. Uh, so to mitigate, to mitigate the risk and safeguard your main workforce, uh, we say strongly urge all builders to adopt good practices when um, RSC workers are coming into your site. So these workers, these RSC workers should be wearing um, uh, more visible, visible or stronger visual identifiers that to distinguish them from the main workforce and to ensure that these roving subcons do not interact with the main workforce, uh, the SDO or SMO should closely monitor these roving subcon workers when they are doing the operations on site. There should also be separate uh, common facilities either by staggered timing or, or dedicated facilities for RSC workers. And these RSC workers should also be brief on the SMM measures and uh, aware of their responsibility to avoid interaction with the main workforce on site. So in conclusion, um, we noted that the industry has generally practiced good SMM on site and the industry has recognized the importance of good SMM in 
preventing C plus infection. Uh, moving forward, builders should continue working closely with BCA to facilitate the listing of STOs by uh, practicing adequate and proper SMM on site and to provide prompts and complete responses for all the documents that we require when an STO has been issued. And lastly, to ensure minimal work disruption, uh, builders uh, are encouraged to utilize safe entry NRIC at work zone levels. Uh, they are, conduct separate entry points at between CTQ and the construction site if applicable. Uh, and to conduct two box meetings in smaller groups. Yeah, that comes to the end of my presentation. So we'll move on to the next presenter. Thank you, Elvin. Next, we have Mr. William Lai, Regional HSE Leader APEC, Baker Hughes will share with us on the good practices on SMM in the oil and gas industry. Mr. Lai, please. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you hear me well. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pune, Mr. Niri, and Mr. Kenneth Vu for giving me the opportunity uh, to be here to share you know, some uh, good practices that we have um, in the company that uh, we are working in. Uh, so they say there's no boundaries in code, no competition in safety. So um, I think such a platform uh, is, uh, oops. So that this is such a platform that is a good opportunity for us to share those practices to help us to manage one of uh, all of our respective ship uh, to stay out of the sea, right? So um, let me give it maybe some context over here. Uh, I'll, I'll be talk about um, the way we manage um, the response um, in in. Uh, the way of uh, the background, the strategy, the implementation, and the reviews and improvements. Um, so let's begin with the background. So let me give an overview. So Baker Hughes is an energy technology company. Uh, in the past, very much oil and gas, but these days we call ourselves an energy technology company. Uh, we operate in 120 countries. Um, so uh, usually deal with all the energy uh, related uh, equipment. And in Singapore, um, and today's, uh, discussion is uh, purely on Singapore. We have three manufacturing sites and we have office and we have a future chemical manufacturing plant that's coming out. Um, so that's the, that's the, the background. We are, that's the context uh, we talk about today. Uh, we believe uh, when the whole COVID uh, situation started in uh, January, uh, we believe that what is really important is to make sure that we have the strategy in place. Uh, so you can see that uh, over here, what we did was really to identify the crisis management team and the emergency response uh, uh, team as well. Uh, we also uh, spent a lot of time understanding the requirements, uh, whether is it from the corporate or also uh, at other countries that we operate in. And in Singapore-wise, we refer very, uh, uh, very often to, to all the regulations that is put out by the various ministries. And then what we did was really to create a, a operating procedure that is um, uh, that comprises of all the global requirements, all the regulatory requirements of the countries to make sure that uh, we have one standard operating requirements in Singapore. And then uh, what is also important was to make sure that we agree on the operating rhythm. And this is how we are gonna communicate on a very regular basis. Uh, in this case, in Singapore, we communicate on a weekly basis. So all the operations in Singapore, we communicate on a weekly basis and on just on specific to COVID response. So that's the strategy. Uh, and of course, there will be a lot of things in, this, in uh, what we need to do. Um, but this is, is really the highlights. And, and in Singapore, what is really important is we have decided that there's only one person who is uh, going to be the CMP, uh, crisis management leader. Uh, and, uh, and this is a senior leader in the company in, operate, in Singapore. And then we operated three multi-discipline uh, emergency response team uh, because we have three manufacturing sites. So we had the, we have having three ERP teams. Um, so, so one of these things that we, 
really want to remind the team as well, I, I think what is important is COVID is maybe a new threat, um, but we, we remember that we have a process or procedure already in place to manage all such emergency um, and threat. And that is utilizing the emergency response team that we already established a uh, long time ago, whether it's in our uh, safety management system and, and so on. So utilizing the emergency response team help us to manage the new threat. Uh, and then uh, we also have a lot of support from the region team and the global team as well. Um, the other strategy that is really important for us really to uh, adopt the work from remote policy. So as far as we are concerned, what is important is we will work from remote uh, whenever we can. So that is the first option. Uh, so that, uh, that helps to minimize interaction and, and uh, transmission. Uh, again, focus on regulations and corporate requirements. Uh, and also one of those things is really have the one Singapore emergency response procedure, but having three site specific procedures. Uh, so three of them can have be a bit different, um, but in general, uh, they have the same set of guidelines they follow too. Uh, the other one that I mentioned is important or is on a very regular meeting. So we have a regular meeting weekly for all the sites uh, to communicate. And the, the other strategy that's important is to make sure we communicate uh, very often with the relevant parties, whether is it with authorities or whether is it with our employees to understand, to make sure that they understand what is going on and what is the, what are we planning for in the next few weeks or so. So uh, regular, regular communication. Right, so let me move on to talk about the implementation. So we have, uh, you know, a, a good setup uh, behind the scene to make sure that uh, we are, uh, supporting the implementation. So one of those things that really started, uh, we, we did was to uh, make sure that we have a workforce arrangement. Uh, so we run on three shifts um, and, and the operations side make sure that uh, they have, uh, they stick to their own shift. Uh, so they, are, they do not meet one another at a workplace. Um, so uh, when they do a shift change, so what we do is we house some people in a, uh, a common area first. Um, when people are in place uh, at their station, then we move uh, the, the previous shift out of the, uh, the location. Uh, so apart from the three shift, there's one team that's called the permanent home office. So these are the people who have to ask for permission before they are allowed to go to the uh, site. Otherwise, uh, they are not allowed to. So this is, uh, this is the workforce arrangement. And with that arrangement, we also have an online workflow where we create a system where the employees have to go onto the system and uh, seek permission to go to office. So they have to do that uh, uh, in advance. So if they do not get permission, they are not allowed into the site. Uh, we also established the travel policy uh, as well uh, for employees who are going in out of countries. Not that we all can, but uh, there may be business trip that may, uh, not that we can do any leisure to travel, but we, for the business trips and so on, we expect uh, uh, approval process and only essential travel. And also we have a health and travel declaration before they are allowed back into the site. And subsequently then there was a safe entry implementation um, uh, when the government launched it, then we all have also adopted that as well. Right, so when it comes to implementation, this is on the site. So um, you probably seen it in a lot of locations as well. So we try to take the best practice where we can, whether is it from shopping malls or whatever, we put it into our workplace uh, and we get we get spot check uh, uh, every now and then as well. So uh, we work together with the authorities. So urinals, for example, make sure that we all segregate them. The, where we clock area, we also have a very similar to what you have in the in a uh, hawker center or shopping mall. You make sure that you have yellow lines and the security posts as well. Uh, pantry area, we limit the number of people that can go into the pantry at one time. Um, and water dispenser area as well. Again, a lot of marking uh, to make sure that people are, are apart and not congregate together. Um, we have also a regular temperature taking station. So employees have to be at the location to take temperature. And then when it's time to go home, 
uh, the bus pickup area as well, uh, we segregate them to make sure that they are all um, uh, not staying close together. And we uh, actually, during this period, we have to get more buses uh, because we have to stagger the seating in the bus as well. So, so that is uh, another challenge that we had. Um, but the good thing was we overcome that. Uh, so, so that was good. So staggered bus uh, seating arrangement to take employees home. The other one is automating rooms. So the automating rooms have a specific number of people that can go in at one time. So we put out there three person maximum or, or five people maximum. So that was all labored, uh, as well as reception area and other office areas. Uh, we talk about toolbox meeting. Uh, this is it as well, uh, where we make sure that we are all spaced out and there's a place for them to stand. Uh, and eating areas as well, they're all marked and the queuing area, um, we, we mark them out as well. Okay, smoking areas. I know there are smokers who like to get together. So we deliberately also mark the smoking areas so that they can stand at the location to smoke um, and not uh, stick too close together. Uh, prayer room as well. So uh, we have also limit the number of people in a prayer room at any time, point of time. Right, apart from that uh, implementation. So uh, after we have some breathing space already, we feel that there are a lot of people who maybe uh, a bit, got a bit fatigued by the whole uh, uh, CB period and so on. So we started to have a virtual yoga and fitness session. Uh, and that uh, is on every Thursday and Friday. Uh, and we also started to have uh, webinars. Um, so some of the webinars, we have a few programs such as how do you manage relationship? Uh, how do you manage kids? You know, how do you manage stress? So we start to have the kind of uh, webinars that's made available online. And then on top of that, we have an employee assisted program whereby if anybody who has any form of stress um, or they feel the, um, that um, their mental wellness is uh, not at the best, they can actually call the hotline and somebody, uh, 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 there will be somebody who will attend to you and, and speak with you. And of course that will be uh, uh, totally of confidential. So, so and, and we do have a, a lot of people who call in, uh, um, not exactly that they have a mental wellness but, uh, issue, but they just have, uh, they, they feel that they can talk to somebody and, and it's always good to have a listening ear. Uh, yeah. Okay, also other measures, of course, uh, we all know uh, safe management officers, so we have uh, have them. Uh, during this period, we identified qualified vendors uh, for disinfect, uh, uh, infecting and cleaning. And so we increase our in disinfecting and cleaning our workplace. So we have to quickly approve a new vendor to help us to do that. Uh, we also did a confirmed case response drill. So to make sure that we are all familiar with what to do when we have a confirmed case, we put our uh, emergency response team to test by putting a drill uh, and see how they respond. Uh, apart from that, also we monitor the dormitory situation with our contractors. Some of our contractors have employees working in dormitories. So we work with them very closely to make sure that they are uh, doing, doing fine. Uh, also, we have a lot of uh, em foreign employees uh, who may be from Malaysia. Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to have accommodation arrangement with them. And the other thing we do quite often is uh, every now and then is a uh, conduct employee survey. So uh, see whether are they comfortable with uh, the measures that we have put in place um, and if there's anything that we can do better. Okay, and there's one important part which uh, on the weekly meeting we do is we review what's going on and if uh, is there's anything that we need to change or not. So um, so on a weekly basis, we review uh, all the programs in place. And these days is a, a lot better, not so many things to change. Um, but what do we review on? We review on whether there are any significant changes to risk. Um, for example, recently, if government has uh, talked about there's a possibility to having a cruise to nowhere now. So we start to think about, okay, if there's a cruise to nowhere, maybe our employees may sign up for it and we cannot control that, but we can control maybe our gate and make sure that we all have uh, uh, checked our travel and health declaration again. So we are reviewing that now. 
we also review the regulations and guidelines, uh, the gaps in the processes, and also those feedback and survey results are from the employees is what we review on. Right. So basically, that's it. Uh, I mean, uh, um, generally, uh, maybe to round it, uh, to, to close uh, this session, I'll just say that uh, one of those things that we really spend a lot of time doing is to uh, proactively overreact. So uh, trying to do more than we uh, the guidelines or, or the whether the regulation asks for, uh, that help us a lot uh, when things change um, along the way. So that's all I have. Thank you so much. And over to you, next speaker. Thank you, Mr. Lai. Lastly, Mr. Don Wilson, Senior Manager, WSHE Streets Construction, will be sharing on the effective implementation of SMM at project boot sites. Mr. Wilson, please. Hi, uh, very good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Don here. I'm the Senior Safety Manager uh, for Streets Constructions. First of all, um, thank you, um, BCA, for the invite for my presentations. Okay, um, today I'll be sharing with everybody the effective, uh, effective uh, implementation of safe management measures at project sites. These are vision and missions, core values. Today I'll be sharing the contents of COVID safe workforce, safe work site, COVID safe training, uh, COVID safe worker combinations and transportations. Okay, uh, in the whole company of uh, streets construction um, entity itself, okay, the organizations, uh, we have total of uh, 388 SMO train, as well as we have another of uh, 850 STO, which is also trained by the subcontractors itself. Okay, risk communications to various stakeholders. Okay, it's very important because um, everybody needs to know what is the implementations as well as why is the and regulations at our project sites. Okay, we have our pre-screening procedures, which our contractors need to go through it and then we need to check. Monitor of, uh, monitoring of workers. Okay, we also have our SES uh, Streets Construction straight in charge assigned for monitoring of subcontractors. So individual straight in charge will be monitoring certain group of uh, subcontractors with regards of the COVID status. Transportation through and fro uh, worksite. Supervisions and managing vehicles are very on site. I think this is very important because you need to have a designated vehicle parking area for alighting of uh, workers. Once you have um, so-called subcontractors coming into your site, uh, this is to prevent any congestions at your guard room. Okay, this is another example of daily reporting to the work schedule in a staggered timing. Okay, we do monitor very closely of all the subcontractors' workers' access code for the work pass holder. And uh, we actually um, make it a mandatory in the morning, whereby um, before the workers start coming to your site, uh, all the subcontractors have to actually send in the WhatsApp group okay, to individual um, project sites to show that uh, they are cleared to uh, go out for work. Which is this, okay, pre-entry pre check before transportation to the project site. So every morning we will have all these um, pre-check before they actually can uh, come uh, on board or so-called uh, on board of the transportations before they come to the work site. Okay, a proper PPEs. Uh, anyone that is without face masks will be denied for entry. I believe that everybody is, uh, all the people is SOP on this. Okay, um, this thing I, I would like to raise on this is, is because um, there's a lot of um, so-called uh, traditional way of um, having protecting the workers um, on the skin disease on on their face itself. So basically, I uh, we actually ban on this um, cloth masking, okay, or the handkerchief or even scarf. Okay, it's because this is not the appropriate or so-called the proper uh, mask 
and uh, we are unable to see whether is this worker actually done on onto a purple mask. Therefore, we actually uh, totally ban on this of the overall heat fabric. Okay, we also show that uh, required uh, apps for all the workers. Site entry, SDN implemented at the entrance of the site. Temperature screening with a non-contact, uh, non-contactless uh, thermometer. Entrance of the site. Okay, we do have our health decorations, our daily health decorations, whereby you will be back and monitored closely by my SD, uh, SMO itself. Okay, next I would like to show you on the safe entry procedure, which we actually come out um, during the first, um, during the start of the phase two, whereby we blast it through to all the subcontractors, including all the workers. I mean, to write on on this, uh, because all the workers in Singapore actually have this smartphone. So we actually write on this and we send and we blast it out to everybody. Before entering to project site, all site personnel or visitors are required to report to the site security. The site security will first identify the identification of the person and check the work pass status via the SG work pass application. It will only be allowed if the app screen shows can go out for work which is boxed up in green and if it shows in red, access will be denied. When your access code is red, tap on the color bar to find out why access code is red. Workers may have more than one reason for getting red access code. Thereafter, undergo the temperature screening using the contactless thermal scanner. Check in Safe Entry NRIC using Trace Together application. Trace Together application is a mandatory application needed to be downloaded to support government contact tracing effort. Next, the person is also required to complete a health decoration via the QR code displayed and duly answer all questions online. Upon completion, the person shall show his completion screen to the security for verification purpose. The person will then proceed to the SAS face scanning system to scan in before gaining access to the site. At the end of the day, scan out at the SAS face scanning system. Then proceed to check out safe entry NRIC using Trace Together application. Do ensure this mandatory application have been downloaded to your smartphone.
Okay, um, I believe that the videos uh, actually helps a lot of workers to better understand, including all the visitors that wanted to enter to our project sites. So basically, we'll be sending out these videos to all the visitors as well as the workers, and they have a better clarity on what is our procedure, rather than uh, on site when they come over, then they will start to download each other, download all the apps. Okay, this is a site entry procedure for the delivery uh, drivers itself. Okay, example of a delivery and logistic arrangement. We do have our loading and our loading bay that is clearly demarcated on site so that all the delivery drivers will know where to park and then we'll assist them to unload without the drivers coming down to the vehicles. And it's also minimized context. Okay, our SDM implemented for our daily two board meeting sessions, but you can see that all the boxes are clearly demarcated on the floor so that um, by one glance, every all the workers will know where to stand rather than using the naked eyes to measure where is how far or how near is the one meter safe distancing measures. Okay, next, uh, this is the pilot run on the Blue Pass itself. Okay, uh, we're having this uh, pilot run on the Blue Pass, uh, contact tracing using technology. Basically, it's a very good uh, device. It's pairing with the user with the Blue Pass. And then all you need to do is just to bring it along with you. And upon consent, record can be uploaded. So how is this works? Um, basically, you just need uh, your work permit and then the Blue Pass by using the Barcode, barcode scanner as well as a QR code scanner. Okay, the encrypted uh, contact tracing record exchange will be between Blue Pass will be automatically. So, what is the usage of this? Is that okay? Basically, if let's say there's anyone that is down with a C plus, okay, we can actually download it at our back end immediately, and we can do our own contact tracing immediately and become a more proactive rather than waiting for the authorities. We can uh, be much more proactive and then we can do the uh, contact tracing as well as also segregations. And um, most importantly is to um, isolate all those that is being uh, close contact with the C+. Okay, upcoming, we are looking at this blue gate. Okay, blue gate, there's indications that you can show um, and keep track of all the workers that is within your site, as well as also know the battery um, strength as well as the frequency where level whether is it your blue pass is it working working condition or not okay uh, site team zoning and segregations okay we have our team segregations for lunch and a team a team b as well as team c which is working from home okay for project teams implemented at our project site office. We can see that everything is clearly demarcated on the floor. We also have a se separate designated entry and, and uh, exit for staircase level two and level three. Uh, over here, I'd like to highlight that, um, please do remember that where, while complying with one, we doesn't want to violate another. So for all the barricade itself, um, we all using the yellow, um, so-called the plastic chains with your red and white. Reason being is that if you are having this physical barricade, basically you are actually violating the fire safety code. Therefore, we are actually using this because it's a site office. I believe that everybody have own discipline. Uh, we'll not go and uh, so-called uh, damage it. Okay, our zone uh, site segregations and zoning. It's clearly demarcated. Okay, we are using the safe entry QR code for scanning and entering individual zone. footpath and access to into different zones itself is clearly demarcated. For zoning egress and uh, egress and uh, egress, ingress and egress, okay, uh, we have clearly demarcated which are the area and which are the zone. As you can see that even toilet itself is a dedicated toilet for individual zones. And we have a human traffic uh, stoppage. Okay, for zone A, there's a clear demarcations on where they can actually enter and exit. In case of emergency, uh, where did they actually, where, uh, example, this is a zone B. 
C as well as D. Okay, uh, for, for us, we have a green zone, green zone which is applicable to all the supervisors, white color helmet or blue color helmet, which they are able to, or uh, they are authorized to uh, enter to each individual zone to ensure that SDM is being implemented. Okay, we also implement zone sticker on equipments. So make sure that the different zones don't use or share with any other zones um, for their equipments and hand tools. Okay, we have an individual rest area for site personnel. Which you can see that, that there's a board to segregate or so-called divide it and split between uh, each other. Individual zone toilets and facilities. Okay, we have some of the implementations and innovations by our workers during the phase two of restart. Okay, we also have a staggered meal timing for all the subcontractors that is on board at our projects. Okay, this is a skin cleaning schedule. Okay, we do have our cleaning schedule and as well as a checklist. So basically the cleaner are required to scan on the QR code and fill in the checklist. Okay, worker performing daily cleaning of common areas. Okay, uh, we have our in-house uh, performing uh, disinfections, uh, misting uh, operations. Okay, SMO inspection flow charge. This uh, SMN checklist and inspection flow chart is actually collaborated with our safety uh, inspections and our safety checklist. Okay, this is to facilitate uh, in, the, in terms of um, paperwork itself. Okay, rather than having two different checklists or having two different timing, we actually collaborate and then we make it, make it together as one. So that uh, when my uh, safety guys are on site, they can check on the safety as well as the SMM. Okay, the safe management, um, safe management measures inspection reports. Okay, we have our daily inspection SMM implementations uh, checking. Okay, um, to be honest, uh, a lot of people after entering the site, we might not know that whether did they off their Bluetooth. So we have a random check daily and everybody need to report it to in the our group chat. Okay, non-compliance on COVID-19 requirement will be uh, issued stop work internally and ensure everybody uh, comply with it. Okay, we have our internal audit on SMM. Okay, this is a procedure for handling of suspected cases of COVID-19. Okay, our holding area for suspected COVID-19 cases. Emergency procedure. Okay, we do have our emergency evacuation plan for COVID-19. So everybody, all this will be being briefed by our centralized COVID uh, SIC. Everybody will be briefed and they are aware of where to go to and where to example in uh, example uh, in case of emergency, as well as for the COVID-19. Our promotions on the prevention of COVID-19. These are all the signages. We also provide online as well as um, on site itself for the mental wealth of the workers because I believe that everybody is very stressful um, because a lot of workers are being still uh, not allowed to go freely or so called roam freely outside or go to their little India having gathering. So we actually have our this hotline as well as on site hotline with our PMs. Okay, we constantly having these TVs on all our projects. During the rest day, or so called the resting timing or the meal time, it will be of um, keep on flashing on all the COVID 19 preventions measures and informations. 
Today is our promotion on the preventions of COVID-19 before the CP period. Okay, we distribute our individual personal thermometer. And uh, we also distribute our the pulse oximeter to all the TLQ and CTQ workers to monitor their blood pressure, the oxygen in the blood, sorry. Okay, uh, lately uh, we have this uh, living uh, gut street mask. Okay, it was uh, distributed, uh, it was sponsored by Thermase and it was distributed by Scale and uh, collaboration with uh, Batu. And everybody get a fair share of it, including all our subcontractors. So um, as per request by the our workforce, our workers, uh, they would like to thank uh, Thermase for it. Thank you. Okay, next I'll show you on the safe innovations by our project and in fact uh, it's all the workers that are coming up with all these innovations or innovative ideas which help us on a lot uh, for the contactless measures.
Yeah, um, one thing I want to uh, mention about here is that, of course, um, you can have a lot of um, innovations or even there's a lot of technology available already in the market, like non uh, so called sensor, motion detector, and etc. But uh, however, we are just making good on the existing facility that we have. In fact, all these innovations or innovative ideas are all come out from our foreign migrant workers, which I, if you to be honest, if you ask me, I will not know how to do all this. So I really, really appreciate to all the workers that actually come out with all these fantastic ideas. Okay, training on the new norm. Like I mentioned uh, earlier on, uh, we have our centralized SIC for COVID and uh, as well as our safety inductions. Okay, um, basically to write on on everybody is having this, all the workers having this smartphone. So we actually having this uh, centralized SIC as well as uh, after completing the SIC itself, we have our COVID safe induction assessment, which everybody needs to complete it. KD is to raise the awareness as well as to know that whether did they uh, understand the whole overall of the SIC. Okay, uh, workers, uh, combinations and transportations. KD is a requirement. Okay, on site dormitory itself, we do segregate it into different zones. And we do have a metric itself to identify which are the under the high risk or the medium risk or as well as the low risk. Here is our uh, quarters room layout and appoint every, um, every room to have a CSWL, COVID safe worker leaders, to ensure everybody uh, took their temperatures twice a day and ensure the, um, the safe distancing measures being complied with. Okay, individuals, um, team toilets, Okay, uh, every room we do have our contactless thermometer and hand sanitizer. And the information on the TLQ, how many workers staying at which, uh, which floor and uh, each rooms. Everything is being recorded. Okay, we actually converted our uh, three story of the office into a temporary TLQ, which on the first floor and the third floor. Okay, designated entry exit. Okay, isolation room and sick bay. We separated out. So uh, for the isolation occupants, we have our individual's uh, toilet as well as for the sick bays. Okay, we have our daily transportation record. Okay, so that we know that uh, which are the drivers and which are the lorry numbers as well as the details of the transporter that actually transport the workers. Okay, next will show you on how a day will look like for workers in the dormitory. If that will be the last one. Hi everyone, today I will share with you how a day will look like for workers living in the dormitory. In the morning, turn on the Trace Together app and Bluetooth when in your dorm. Check your temperature and turn on FWMOM Care app to report health status and address.
scan work pass with SG work pass app to know if you are cleared for work. Only proceed if the app screen shows can go out for work which is boxed up in green. When your access code is red, tap on the color bar to find out why access code is red. Workers may have more than one reason getting red access code. At the dorm exit, allow the security to check the work pass status via the SG work pass application. Before entering to project site, all site personnel are required to report to the site security and check the work pass status via the SG work pass application. You will only be allowed to proceed if the app screen shows can go out for work. Thereafter, undergo the temperature screening using the non-contact scanner thermometer. Before entering worksite, check in using Trace Together app via Safe Entry NRIC. Complete a health declaration via the QR code displayed and duly answer all questions online. Upon completion, the person shall show his completion screen to the security for verification purpose. Then, proceed to the SAS face scanning system to scan in. Scan on the safe entry QR code to check in to the designated zone you are entering. Upon exiting the designated zone, check out using the safe entry QR code. Scan out at the SAS face scanning system. After work, check out using Trace Together app via safe entry NRIC. At the end of the day, check temperature and turn on FWMOM Care app to report health status and address.
do ensure we strictly adhere the process in accordance to the video. Thank you for watching. Okay, um, thank you so much. I hope everybody benefit from this um, sharing. Okay, um, it's very important that uh, the video is actually churning up because there's a lot of steps. Uh, basically, if let's say the workers to understand every single step, it's going to be very difficult for them. Therefore, we actually uh, took the initiative to come out with the videos and we actually mass blast it to all the workers and the workers will understand it better um, by looking or so-called watching the video and comply to our SMM on site that which is to implement that. With that, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. We will now move on to the Q&A session. Together with, with the three webinar chairs, we have colleagues from BCA to join us on the panel. You may participate in the conversation by posting your questions via the Q&A button on the screen or by clicking the raise hand button to ask verbal questions once we have activated the function. Over to you, webinar co-chair, please. Webinar co-chair, there is a question on um, what are the information, detail of workers or staff that will need to be submitted in the event of C+. Is there any guidelines or template for the required document to be submitted? Will collecting of this information be against the Data Protection Act? Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, thanks for the questions and uh, thanks for the speakers to share their details. Uh, basically, the details that will be shared or with us is from MOH on the worker's name and the fin detail. This is kept confidential. Uh, and uh, these are actually for the contact tracing part. So MOH has actually have a comprehensive way of not to share these details. So that are the main two details that we usually get from MOH. Anything else? Okay, next there will be a question on, um, they would like to clarify on the requirements of safe accommodation and the minimum requirement now that there is one room consists of workers from one employer, but can it be of multiple side? Right, uh, Sebastian can help to answer this, please. Hi, uh, I'm Sebastian. Yeah. Uh, so basically, for the new cohorting requirements, so uh, all the we encourage uh, all the workers from one employer to be actually cohorted within a room. So within a room, if let's say they are actually working on uh, different multiple sites. So what happened is that if let's say the workers are residing in uh, dormitories, TBDs, so actually uh, employers can actually work with the dormitory operators to segregate, segregate them in two different rooms instead of the one room. But then with that, they actually have to be adjacent to each other. Yeah. So the, it's up to the employers to actually uh, work with the respective dorm operators to actually segregate such arrangement. As far as possible, if let's say workers are working within the same site, of course, they can stay in the same room. But if they are actually working on different multiple project sites, all those things, uh, we encourage and advise them to be actually segregated. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, Sebastian. Uh, let me take up one question on the safe entry branch code uh, that was asked. Do I still you still need a unique branch code uh, for safe entry? Okay. The reason that why we advocate to have a unique branch code in every entry or exit uh, is because sometimes uh, the SMO or STO do key in a wrong detail and uh, from that in order to trace where the worker went in and all that happened to be uh, not accurate. So uh, that's the reason that we actually think that a unique branch code will be easier so that there's less human intervention in making any mistakes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Webinar well, coaches, um, there is one raised hand participant. Do you want to sure. move on to answer him? Okay, um, right. there is this Mohammed Fredels. We have allowed you to unmute yourself. Could you unmute your mic and speak? Thank you. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my question is for non dormitory workers, work permit holder. So, are they allowed to take public transport for the race day? For non-dormitory yeah, so workers, 
Yeah, Sebastian, you want to answer this? Or? Uh, yeah, so for workers that are staying in non-dormitories, which is yeah. example PPD and PRP, currently yeah. there is no requirements on the transportation, whether uh, on your off day, example, if you are not going to construction site. So basically yeah. the construction, the safe transportation matrix by BCA is only governing if you are going to construction site to work. And also we understand that the safe transportation requirements under MOM is only governing those that are staying in PBDs. So in your HDB PRP, this case, you, we understand currently there is no such requirement, but you need to uh, refer to MOM website for further updates on this, if there is any. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other yeah. further questions? Yeah. Next, we have from Doria. We have issue use the right to unmute yourself. Could you speak? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, just a follow up question on the which question uh, under the S Park holders staying HDB. There was a question raised as far for the same HDB can take public transport. Just want to clarify, as far under construction was site same HDB can take public transport? Yeah, Sebastian? Yeah, so regarding this question again, if let's say uh, you are S pass holders staying at HDB or PRP, and if you are going to construction site for work purpose, you are going to construction site. So according to the matrix, you are not allowed to take public transport. Uh, however, if let's say you are asking on your off day for off day purpose, all those things, that matrix will not apply to you, but we will encourage that you check with your employers to assess the risk whether they want you to take public transport or should take dedicated transport by them for your off work, off day purpose. Yeah, that is for HDB and PRPs. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, webinar coaches, it's about time to wrap up the session. Do you want to give uh, closing remarks? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank both uh, Skel, Mr. Kenaflu, and uh, CISO, Mr. Niri, to join participate in this uh, BCA's seminar webinar and uh, we'll be holding such webinars in future from other areas in sharing in uh, reno works and also this kind of uh, construction areas we will hope that uh, everyone here had a fruitful time and the the shared details were actually uh, indeed helpful for your implementation of smm plans at your site and uh, with that i'll thank mr kenov and mr niri for their contribution in this webinar thank you everybody Mr. Kenneth Liu, you want to say something? Yep, uh, thanks uh, uh, VCA and uh, FISO for having us uh, work together. I think everybody is in a, uh, learning, going through this journey together. Uh, this uh, learning process is uh, uh, continuous. Of course, uh, we'll be having updates uh, as we go. Uh, I hope er uh, everybody is, uh, had a fruitful session as well. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Liu. How about Mr. Niri? Yeah, thank you. Um, Engineer Puni, uh, Scal, Mr. Kenneth, uh, for having SISO as, as to co-partner this webinar. At the same time, I'd like to thank the presenters who, with so much of information within such a short time, it was really wonderful. The entire webinar would not have been successful without the contribution of the questions from the audience. So thank you very much to the audience. And, and I think overall, very satisfied with where we've reached at the end of this. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, webinar coaches. We've come to the end of this session. After exiting this webinar, you will be directed to access an evaluation form for today's session. Once submitted, you will be able to download the speaker's presentation materials via the website as shown. On this note, we thank you for your participation and making this webinar a success. We wish you and project teams a safe and smooth restart. Signing off, this is Huiwen from BCA.